cryptography. All right, cryptography is used in many ways. One of the ways that it can be used for is authentication, to secure your username and password in an encrypted fashion so that others cannot use that. Now, it does use encryption, and encryption can be one or two ways. Okay? It can be a one-way encryption, meaning it produces a hash, kind of like we've already previously talked about. A two-way encryption means that it can be encrypted and then decrypted. Now, cryptography, it really supports integrity and confidentiality, as well as non-repudiation. And it uses various algorithms. But first off, let's talk about encryption, okay? Now, the first thing that we're going to talk about in encryption is going to be the encrypted file system. The encrypted file system that is built into Microsoft products is a wonderful, wonderful tool. When you actually go in and talk about the encrypted file system, in encrypt files, you can encrypt folders and everything within the, that folder, or you can even encrypt an entire drive. Now, it is not recommended to encrypt an entire drive because it will really slow down the performance of the machine when it has to decrypt all the system files. So what they recommend is that you only encrypt your sensitive data. Now, in order to really help you to understand this, I'm going to go ahead and show you a demonstration and go ahead and follow along. All right, in this demonstration, I'm logging in as the administrator and what I'm going to show you is the encrypted file system and how it works. The encrypted file system is unique in the fact that, like I said, you should not encrypt the entire drive because it will slow down on the system resources incredibly. So, as we wait just a second here for the administrator to go ahead and get logged in, should take just a second. I'm going to go in and show you just a plain text document that I've created. It's not encrypted or anything else. I'm going to show you what it does when it encrypts it. We're going to log off as the administrator, log on as another user to make sure that we can see the document and then we'll log in, do some logging in back as administrator to show you that uh, the administrator can see it even though all the users are able to access it with it being encrypted they're now able to actually see what's in it. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to go into my computer and right on, I created a little directory here called encryption test. Okay. And inside there it says this is a test, a little test, uh, text document. Now I'll go up one level, come over here, and we're going to look at the properties of this. We're going to see that my, a standard user can actually log in and be able to see this. In fact, I'm going to click on that. Yeah, they have the read permission, they have the list folder contents, and read and execute. And there should be nothing blocking any type of hierarchy on that. So let's just double check down here. And standard users, yep, read and execute. Okay, we're good. Have no problem with that. So now that we know a standard user should be able to log in and read it because they do have the permissions, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click this and go to properties. And on my general tab, I'm going to go ahead and click the advanced button. Now there's something unique about here that I've never understood and I don't think anybody else has. Normally when you have an option of one or the other, they give you radio buttons. But in this case, Microsoft did this starting back in Windows 2000 and it's still the same even now. If you compress a file or folder, you cannot encrypt it. 
if you notice, I did not uncheck the compress. It just switched it. So they gave boxes instead of radio buttons. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to encrypt the contents of this. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to apply that. And it says apply the changes to this folder, subfolders, and the files. So yeah, I want to go ahead and do that. And we can see that it's applying those attributes now. So now we notice that the text, instead of being uh, straight black text like it is for anything else, it's actually green text. Well, since I encrypted it, I should be able to still go in and read it. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to log off as the administrator. And I'm going to log in as one of my users, John Doe. And we're going to wait for him to get signed in for just a second. Once he gets signed in, we're going to try to access that same folder. Now, if you remember, on the folder he had the list folder contents, read and execute, and read permissions. So there's no reason he shouldn't be able to read it all the way down to the file, but because it's encrypted, he should not be able to actually read the file him itself. It should give us an access denied message. So let's just wait here for this to finish booting up. Okay, here we go. His first time logging in. Going to access the C drive. I notice that it still shows me that the encrypted folder is in fact in the green text. I had the list folder contents permission so I can actually see what's in there. I also had the read and execute permission so I should be able to go in here and access it. And as you can see it is unaccessible because it is encrypted with the key for the administrator account. Even though I have permissions to view it, so I can go in here and I can look at my security permissions as a standard user. Remember, I should have read and execute here, but I cannot read it because it is encrypted and it's not with my encryption key. So, remember, if you try to encrypt an entire drive, it's going to slow down the performance. And once you encrypt it, no one else is able to view it except for yourself. And in the event that you would quit or leave the job, be terminated, there is a recovery agent that we're going to talk about in the file and print section that will be able to go in and decrypt this. By default, that's the administrator. They'll be able to decrypt it to recover the files.